Alexa, turn office window off. Hey guys, this time I'm not using any Agara stuff to toggle my blinds. Well, technically I'm using obviously Agara E1, but I'm not using any Agara hubs. I'm using Zigbee to MQTT to talk to my smart assistants and use Node-RED to control the driver. So in this video, I'm going to show you first what's inside the driver. We're going to poke around and uh, see what kind of upgrades we could think about. And second, we're going to jump into Node-RED and I'll show you how to set it up. And as usually with these videos, I'm trying to introduce something new. And in this beautiful widget in here, you'll notice that there are two new functions. There are sunrise and sunset controls, which you can toggle with a single button, and the temperature mode, which means that the blinds will open and close based on the temperature in the room, preventing from overheating or from the heat escaping during the winter. Quite useful, I guess, I think. It's time to get the Agara E1 from the wall and open it up. So before you start asking question about this screwdriver, this is ES121 and I have a review in the corner for you so you could check it out. All right, let's pick a tip and let's remove four screws to get inside Agara E1. It's actually quite easy to access it and there's a couple of only clips that hold it together once the screws are out. Now the battery, this is surprise, it's four, sorry, 7.4 volts and there is a kind of a lot of space that you could use for a bigger battery. Now inside there is a main PCB connected to an antenna. There's a separate antenna on the side and a geared motor. Now this obviously has a separate charging, motor controller and the Zigbee part. Let's uh, try to get that out first, the motor controller. There's a small tape, a ribbon tape that uh, connects both modules together and just like that the module is out. Now the main PCB has a dotter board which contains a JN5189 NXP Zigbee chip. Now uh, it's surprising actually to see so many different development paths for testing and probably for flashing. So anyone interested in actually taking a closer look at this and flashing custom firmware shouldn't have any problem. That's pretty much everything I could think of. So let's put it back together where it belongs to and jump into Node-RED and we're gonna start automating. Let's start with the interface overview. So you have a beautiful Agara widget in here, which I've made myself. Now you will recognize that I'm using the same range indicator that I've used in my previous Agara tutorials and basic controls that are available. So you can open the blinds, stop and close the blinds. You can also set the position using a setter, the slider. Right now the curtain is opening. You should be hearing that in the background. I can stop it at any given time and everything should update. Now the slider updates every 30 seconds, uh, sorry, every 10 seconds to bring that value uh, to correct position because Agara doesn't report that uh, position dynamically. Now what's new, you'll notice that there is a daylight mode, temperature mode and a set point. What is daylight mode? Previously I've talked about uh, tracking daylight in my tutorial. I've shown you a simple way how to use Node-RED to keep a track whether it is a night or day outside. It's perfect for everyone that doesn't have a um, Zigbee temperature, humidity and luminosity meters. Uh, but if you would like to use a luminosity instead, you can also get yourself a device like this. I'm going to link that in the description of this video for you. But let's go back to the dashboard. Uh, this button here enables and uh, disables this mode. So with a single click, I'll be able to open uh, my blinds at sunrise and close them and sunset. A similar story is for temperature mode, which works uh, on top of the daylight mode. So in addition to that, you can set it either to too cold or too hot, depending on the uh, year. Or you can set it to too cold or too hot, depending on the time of the year. So for example, in summer, if you set it to uh, too hot, then when you set the temperature of 24 uh, degrees or 23 degrees in here, when temperature in your room reaches that or exceeds this, the curtains will shut 
and obviously you're not going to be suffering from the heat coming through the window. In the winter you can set this to blue and then when it gets too cold you will close your curtains to keep the heat trapped inside if you're using heating. So that's going to be working on top of the daylight mode and it's only working during the day. So there isn't actually that much in here. Basic controls are laid out in here. You'll see that I'm connecting using Agarazic B2 MQDT. By the now, I assume you are familiar with how to add new devices to Zigbee 2 MQDT. I have a tutorial about it and it's gonna be linked in a uh, article linked to this video. So to get information about uh, the curtain you have to uh, send this kind of payload to the topic which is ending with get and I will give you the information and uh, to uh, send commands you sending uh, this to uh, topic ending with set and the commands are as follow now the gar curtain accept either state on or open to open it and to close it a state off or close now you can also pause an emotion using stop and you can set uh, different positions sending a payload position and a number uh, between 0 and 100. That's pretty much in terms of all controls. Now you can use this node red flow as is, as imported. The only thing that you'll have to change obviously is your Agara device ID um, from Zigbee to MQTT and device name if you're using multiple devices. Now if using multiple devices each individual flow deployed will have to have a different message name in here and obviously in here and there's a third one no there's only two places that you have to change and update all the mqtt nodes to correspond with your settings now if you don't want this extra daylight and temperature mode uh, then you can just simply delete all of that because this is responsible for that and the rest is working without it just fine now if you want to have timers another thing that you could do is actually go to my website and check alarm sync you can link this project to get information about alarms stored on your Android device. That way you can actually set alarm on your Android device and synchronize opening your curtains with uh, your alarm set on the next day. It works dynamically so you don't have to preset your alarm saying like, oh, you're going to open them every day at seven. Uh, this will trigger every time there is alarm set on your device and it can be set to anything else you want. In a short overview, you will see that the, these are elements of the UI in here and uh, they issue the same payloads that we have outlined in here. So that's pretty much it. The only exceptions are range format, the icon in a corner uh, in here that will update and change the colors depending on the range which is received by uh, your device and the force update which happen every time we do something so we could uh, read the information from the um, agara and update for example a slider in here to correct value now i also included a, a voice assistant integration and i'm using smart nora and alexa home skill for these now the only limitation is that uh, actually right now the blinds aren't set up in a home uh, google home so they don't have a interface on the mobile uh, but they respond okay to all the Google commands like uh, a Google open close uh, blinds etc now limitation with Alexa skill it's very reliable however there is no blinds as such um, device available through this node and you'll have to set them as a light that way you can issue commands to, uh, like Alexa turn the blinds on or off or in this case office window on or off or set it to specific percentage to make it work if you would like to use commands like open and close uh, then I would strongly suggest you to set up separate routines for those and that was um, a decent workaround. Same goes for uh, schedules. If you have voice assistant connected, you can schedule these using uh, routines in your home assistants without introducing additional nodes to your node red flow. Right guys, that's pretty much it. As usual, if you want to try this project for yourself, in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to the article and the link to the project itself in that article and all relevant resources. So do take time to read about it before you ask any questions. And I know you're gonna say like, home assistant, home assistant. Maybe one day I'll join that bandwagon once I'm bored with Node-RED, but for now, I'm gonna stick with that. Anyway, 
As usual, I don't have a posting schedule, and if you're interested what's coming up next, and I have a lot of things coming up next, then you know how YouTube works. I'm not going to explain you that, but subscription, I appreciate it. And I have a bunch of social media that I use on a daily basis and share projects in advance, so if you want to start a conversation, pick the one you use most and follow me there uh, to get us talking. As for now, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.